Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. If you come to something and you don't uh, are, are having questions with the context, pause the video and be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so, okay? Be a Berean, okay? Follow me along and also follow me along because sometimes, as I keep telling you, this, the mouth, will go quicker than the brain. Sometimes I skip a group. So follow me along, okay? Follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today, okay? One second, please. This issue of, it's not an issue, but this thing about um, cheapening grace and or sinless perfection. Hmm. When you think about those things of how impossible it is for us today to be sinless, even when we have our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ dwelling within us. But see, we ourselves, our spirit and soul, are trapped in this. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 19 on to verse 22. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. Yes, wisdom. Wisdom, which is beautiful, even above rubies, okay? The beauty of the fear of the Lord is, to us, we can't truly compare it onto anything. But we are given a comparison in Scripture of that for onto us as man, a beautiful woman. Or as the glittering of the shiny stones, such as rubies. And interesting that Satan, Lucifer, Son of the morning, covered in every precious stone. Hmm? Yeah. But wisdom, the fear of the Lord, which is beautiful, strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. Hmm. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Now this crosses dispensational lines. It sure does. Paul continued to sin after the Lord saved him. Hey, Peter, remember, <laughs> continued to sin after the Lord saved him. So do you. So do I. We wish it wasn't so. We wish it wasn't so. But it's unfortunately something that is beyond us. <laughs> Let's continue reading. Verse 21. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken. Lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. Ah, yes. Yes. As a lost man, yes. But even as a saved man. There are those who are my bitter enemies who would run me over with a car and beat me to death with a bat, who I have prayed before in the past that the Lord would drop them. But see, it's not up to me to take vengeance. And, you know, for oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. And I have cursed others. As a lost man, of course, you know, using foul language, but also as a saved man, you know, wishing, or not wishing, excuse me, praying for the death of certain enemies. And, even with that, it's like, whoa, Brad, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You realize they're going to hell. Yes. 
But you, I also realize that a lot of them have gone past that point of no return, and they are our Lord's enemies. But we got to be careful about these things, though, brethren. Okay, we got to be careful. I don't want to see even my worst enemy go to hell. I really don't. But the fact is that our God is just, fair, and equal. And when those who reject him and count themselves the enemy of the Lord, then all we can do is praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. Because what, are we suddenly more moral or better than the Lord? No, no. That's why we praise the Lord for his judgment, for his goodness. See, Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. This is obviously speaking to those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay, And in Ephesians 2, 1 on to verse 3. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, who is Lucifer, Satan, that old serpent, the dragon, okay? The red dragon, excuse me, okay? King over all the children of pride? Yeah. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were once them too, brethren. We were. We were. got to remember that sometimes. you got to remember that sometimes when you come across some obnoxious punk who's cursing you for whatever reasons, you got to remember that you were there once yourself. We need to remember from whence we came. We don't stay there like our enemies would have us to do. But we got to remember that we were once one of those. <clears throat> we were once a lost sinner going to hell. Now we are saved sinners going to heaven to be with the Lord. But we got to remember that. That we, we were once one of those who was going to hell. We got to remember that. We have to remember that. We also have to remember, brethren, that there is no such thing as sinless perfection today. There's, it can't happen. It can't, okay? Because, you know, what does the Lord say about, you know, thoughts? The thought of foolishness is sin, okay? And if you look upon a maid and lust well after her in your heart, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart already, okay? So the thought of foolishness is sin, okay? Thoughts can be sin, okay? See, we have to understand the enormity of what sin is until we can begin to truly, even to grasp the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The love of God, which is found at the cross. And a love that only you and I can obtain by death. Death to ourselves. Okay? In Romans chapter 7, in Romans, not John, in Romans chapter 7, see, here, when you come across these fools, these stupid, willfully ignorant fools, these vile people who say, you got to stop sinning, I don't sin anymore, <laughs> okay, even easy believers and heretics, <clears throat> who, who get into that area where it's like, well, okay, we can't stop sinning. So we shouldn't even worry about sinning because I just saved myself by believing. So go on your happy... No, 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 no. See, 
the striving, the striving to cease from sinning, even though we are still going to sin. That striving to please our Lord is something that we ought to look for, to um, uphold, to try to obtain. But then we find out it is vanity. But does that mean that we shouldn't try to, uh, to not sin? We'll say it the scriptures. But first, let's look at it in Romans chapter 7. Paul, who was our example? Okay, our, who, are, who is our example? A sinner who is chief, okay? The great Paul of the church of the living God, okay? Someone obviously didn't tell him that uh, about stopping sinning and being sinlessly perfect. Obviously, he didn't get the memo. Because in Romans chapter 7, verses 14 on to verse 20, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, fleshly, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not sin. Okay? This is very simple. Okay? For what I would, that do I not. Not sin. Paul didn't want to sin. Paul did not want to sin. Okay? But what I hate, that do I. Sin. And see, it's, it's in this argument, this thing that we are addressing here, where these wicked devil, easy believism heretics come in with their dangerous doctrine of just believe, overstepping scriptural repentance and brokenness, calling upon the name of the Lord, saving yourself by your own belief, and making cheap the grace of God. It's like, well, hey, I'm saved. I'm sealed, so chuck it all into the wind. And yes, yes, sure, you shouldn't do that, but go ahead and do it anyway. Don't worry about it. So then we shouldn't strive to please the Lord? Hmm. See, it's that right there. It's that right there. Where Christianity and religion, which is of Satan, comes in to introduce to you gray, okay? And this statement has nothing to do with skin color, you twit. It's black or white, white or black, okay? It's right or wrong, yay or nay. Anything else is of evil, right? There's no shades of gray. There is no option C. It's either or. But see, Satan comes in with that gray, shades of gray. Let's continue in Reve oh, Revelation, in Romans 7 here. If I, if then, I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Yes, because by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay? All right? Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now, Paul, obviously, is in heaven. He is of the church of the living God. Our greatest example, as I ought to say, thank you, brother, um, for us, Paul the Apostle, okay? Within him, within him, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, that seal unto the day of redemption, the Lord lives within you if you are truly saved, okay? All right? It's not talking about the Lord, that right there. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Where does sin dwell? Flesh. Okay? Flesh. For I know, and he answers that question in verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. Yes, because the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay? For the good that I would, I do not, being sinlessly perfect. But the evil which I but the evil which I would not, that I do. And see. 
you could make yourself mad with this. A lot of a lot of babes when they read this and okay they'll understand what Paul's talking about and then they they say like, okay I'm not going to sin today I'm not going to you have a thought it's like oh that was a sin or you look at you know at some scandalously dressed young woman walking down the road with wearing her underwear in public and you're like oh and then the thoughts okay oh uh. okay so no matter what we do, we're going to sin. So does that mean that we just chuck it all and say, well, hey, I'm, I'm going to live my life, right? Or, or, well, I, I believe in all things are lawful for me. But not all things are expedient, you know? So, hey, hey, I believe. I saved myself. Just repent after I do it. It's no big thing. It's not going to keep me from heaven because I saved myself. Hmm. Hmm. Let's continue. Now, verse 20. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin dwelleth in me. And see... Our spirit and soul are stuck for now in this, the flesh. Okay? Flesh is our enemy. Flesh is our enemy. Hmm. I know it says uh, man is not our enemy. I mean, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's right. But, you know, uh, have you not figured it out already that uh, when it comes to your walk with the Lord and the sins that you commit, that it's usually always your own flesh that gets in the way? Have you figured that out, genius? Or are you too perfect? huh? Or do you never have moments when you're a hypocrite? Or do you never sin, huh? You haven't figured that one out yet? Hmm. Babes of only a month old have figured that one out yet. And what? You uh, years and years and decades, right? You haven't figured that one out yet? Mm. Right. Right. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and verse 5. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S spirit, the Lord himself. Okay? Keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. And see... Because of our flesh, we can't do that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We can't. Paul couldn't do it. Paul couldn't do it. Okay? He couldn't do it. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Constantly having your eyes upon the Lord. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Okay? Paul himself couldn't do it. Like I said, Paul apparently didn't get the memo about, hey, you got to stop sinning. And if you were truly saved uh, because they messed that thing up in John, um, and if you were truly saved, you wouldn't sin anymore. Apparently, Paul missed that memo. Okay? Verse 2 in Romans chapter 8. For the law of the Spirit, capital S, of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. And a lot of heretics want to uh, argue this. Okay, they want to argue this. We're going to answer that. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S Spirit, who is the Lord himself. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Okay? Now, let's go to James. James, chapter 1. Okay? James chapter 1, all right? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Flesh is not God, 
Okay, God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, but but one of the arguments that people like to bring up is well, you know, and we're going to look at that in First Peter. Uh, well, if you say, first of all, I don't say that. The Lord said that. Okay? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh profiteth nothing. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. If Okay, if all flesh is sinful, even the flesh that Jesus Christ is come into was sinful, then what about the, uh, the sinless um, crucifixion, right? Hold on. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verses 13 on verse 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. No, Jesus Christ, God our Father, never lusted, never had a wicked thought. Okay? He never committed sin. But yet, Satan, as we all know, tempted Jesus. And when you read what those temptations were, what were all those temptations? Temptations aimed at what? Flesh. Weren't they? Okay? Yes, they were. So, how can God, how was God tempted by Satan if God cannot be tempted with evil? How? Explain that to me. Hmm? Oh, well, he was a man too. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes, yes, yes. But he's God the Father. But see, there again, the Trinity thing, where you demote Jesus as a lesser God than the Father, and he is the Father, Jesus Christ, ah, then you can find your little loopholes, can't you? Hmm. Isaiah chapter 42. You got to remember, dear friend, dear, dear friend, okay? You're not sinlessly perfect. You're going to sin. You have moments when even the greatest people will have moments of hypocrisy. Like we talked about before. You look at Paul, Acts chapter 21, Galatians chapter 2 for Peter, okay? That was there, okay? Because why? Of fleshly things, all right? Flesh is our enemy. I know it says uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I know that. But then again, dear friend, have, are you that much of a novice in the faith that you haven't figured it out that this is what is causing you your biggest problems? Oh, no, it's the devil doing it, right? Hmm. Most of the times, those things that you want to call, say, well, the devil made me do it, kind of like Eve said, uh, if you were really honest and examined yourself, you'd be like, oh, it was just it was me. It's just me. But Isaiah chapter 42, verses 17 on to verse 22. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images, that say to molten images, ye are our gods. You know, they're talking about statues. Obviously in context, right? But you got to remember, what is, um, what is an idol today? Is an idol, this is clearly talking about graven images and molten gods and stuff like that, right? Right? Obviously. Obviously. But in reality, we also know that the extent of an idol is not just limited to statues, right? Come on, come on, you got to admit that. Even you devils have to admit that, okay? Well, let's continue. Hear ye deaf, and look, ye blind, that ye may see. Hmm. Who have eyes that see not and ears that hear not? People who don't want the true Jesus Christ of the scriptures, but will rather have that man of sin, this son of perdition. Sorry about that. I forgot to, I forgot to silence my ringer. <laughs> Sorry, brother. But uh, yeah, people want that man of sin, the son of perdition. 
preached on to them. A God who doesn't judge. A God who loves you unconditionally. But that is not the God of the scriptures, even for us today in this dispensation. Okay? Verse 19. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Now think about this, about verse 19. Who would call the servant of the Lord blind or don't have ears? Someone of the world. Because what does Satan offer you lost people? That if you disregard, disobey what the Lord has said, do contrary to what he has said, then your eyes will be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So in this context, who is blind but my servant? Uh, was the Lord blind? No. No, he had perfect sight. He didn't see like a man seeth. Because like it says in Samuel, the man seeth the outside, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Okay? All right? So no, Jesus was not blind. But who would call him blind? Who would dare to say that the Lord was blind? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Your eyes shall be opened, huh? You get it? And, who's, and who would dare to say that the Lord couldn't hear you or can't hear? Who would dare say that? God's forgotten us. He doesn't hear you. Go ahead and do what you want to do because he's not there. He doesn't hear. You get it? Verse 20. Now, seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, huh? And he heareth not. Is this talking about the servant? Hmm. Who they called blind, and who they say couldn't hear, but then again, but he heareth not. Hmm. Hmm. What doesn't he want? What doesn't the Lord hear? The prayers of those who are against him. Lord, give me a million dollars because you say in your word, if I believe, I'll receive. Mm -hmm. But look at this, verse 21. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Mm. Oh, and let's read verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. Hmm. Now, about verse 21, is the Lord saying that the law is not honorable? Come on, you dumb devils. No, you're not dumb. You definitely speak. You speak too much. Okay, you willfully ignorant devils. You stupid devils. Come on. Come on. All right, is this saying that the law is not honorable? No, no. What is this talking about then, okay? Because you can go, uh, I mean, what the, you know, we just kind of looked at it in Romans chapter 7, okay? All right, where he said, uh, okay, verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do evil, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Okay? All right? Uh, and verse 12 in Romans 7. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So if in Isaiah 42, 21, God was saying that the law wasn't honorable, you would have a glaring contradiction there, wouldn't you? What is he saying in Isaiah 42, 21. The Lord did what no man can do. No one can do. Only he could. He kept the law perfectly. He made it honorable, meaning that he did what no man on earth, even at their best, could do. And that was to keep the law perfectly. And the law was there to show you your sin and how incapable you are 
of keeping the law of God perfectly. That's what that, you know, the Ten Commandments? You know, you got to keep them. You couldn't do that if you tried. And if you break one, you've broken them all. Okay? But see, the Lord, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, did what no man on earth could ever do. He made the law honorable. Not that the law itself wasn't honorable, because we just looked in Romans 7. Okay? That would be, no. What does that mean? Okay, this is how, okay, okay, listen to me, you devils, okay, this is how the sinful flesh that Jesus Christ is come into, this is how that flesh, though sinful, was sanctified because he made the law honorable, doing what no man could do. He kept the law perfectly without ever sinning. Okay, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, just one verse, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Never sin. Never sin. And of course, 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 20. <clears throat> For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. Well, Brad, flesh is corruptible. Yes, it is. But see, he did what no man could do. He kept the law perfectly. Okay? Hence... And him doing what no man could do, keeping the law perfectly, never sinning ever once. And him doing that, that sinful flesh was sanctified by him doing what only he could do. Do you understand? Do you understand? So when you read this, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He never once sinned, but that flesh that God was manifest in, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? That flesh itself was sinful, but he kept the law perfectly. Hence, he was a lamb without spot and without blemish because he did what no man could do, okay? Hence, the law is holy, just, and good. You Do you understand? Do you understand this? Okay, this is not rocket science. Okay? All right? It's not. You're not God. You're not God. Flesh is not God. God was manifest in flesh. Yes. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes. 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 But see, he made the law honorable in meaning that he never broke it once. He never sinned. Hence, when he went to the cross to die for you and I for the sin that I committed and you committed, hence, he was a lamb without blemish or without spot. Why? Because he kept the law. He fulfilled the law and that he never sinned and he was the spotless lamb and he paid the price for our sin. That precious blood. Do you understand? Do you understand? Okay? This ain't rocket scientists. Science here, buddy. Okay? For who, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last day, last times for you. And what are we reading on to here? Uh, verse 20, there we go, okay? Do you understand that? It's very simple to understand that, okay? But now, go back to 2 Corinthians. Go back to 2 Corinthians, okay? So, Jesus did what no man could do. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Jesus did what no man can do. Hence, you and I who are not God, even though we have God living within us, okay? We're not God, okay? And see, when you say, 
I don't sin anymore, or I have stopped sinning, okay? Now, with what we just looked at, does that not put a chill down your spine? It's like, whoa, wait a minute. Jesus never sinned. He couldn't sin, okay? He didn't even sin in thought, all right? And he could see the heart, know what everyone was thinking, okay? Uh, okay? Talk about vexed with the conversation of the wicked, okay? All right? So when you got someone coming around saying, I don't sin anymore, you get it? They're saying they are God. And you know what? With these evil, evil, easy believism devils who, you know, are very good at jumping on that thing too about there is no such thing as sinless perfection. But then again, they pervert it. And we're going to talk about that. Okay? But they pervert it. But even them, it's like, <laughs> you, you can't. That's impossible. And it is. So, people, when you run into these people who say, you got to I don't sin anymore. They're saying they're God. Okay, goodbye. See ya. Don't worry, I won't let the door hit me in the buttocks on the way out. Goodbye. Stay away from them. And trying to show such a one. Number one, that's the Lord's job. But when you have such a thing of pride in you, where I don't sin anymore, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 on to verse 11. And see now, this thing too, about, okay, we can't stop sinning. But then again, we can't be sinlessly perfect. So, okay, if we can't stop sinning, and we know we can't stop sinning, then why even bother, right? And therein comes the easy believism devil. Why even bother? Yeah, you should. You should try not to do that, but don't worry. You're eternally secure, so go ahead and do what you're going to do and repent about it later, right? So then we shouldn't even try, right? Wherefore we labor, labor, doing the works of the Lord of evangelizing, yes, as the Lord would lead us. But remember, remember Romans chapter 12? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? Okay, be not friends with the world. If you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Love not the world. Okay? All right? Does So does that mean we shouldn't strive at all, try at all to live godly in Christ Jesus? Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. And we are accepted in the beloved. Yes, we are. Yet we're not, we're, we're not doing things to save ourselves because our salvation is not of us. Okay? You read Ephesians chapter 1. And Ephesians, read the book of Ephesians today. Okay? By his grace through our faith. Okay? All right? But see, what affects that is rewards. If you are saved and for whatever reason you decide to live as a devil, okay? Okay? And there in a lot of the heretics, it's like, well, how can a saved person do that? A saved person can do anything a lost person can do. They can. Because remember, it's not a force, dear friend. It's not a force. I wish to God sometimes it were, right? Then it'd be easier, wouldn't it? But then you'd be a robot. Let's continue. Okay. Verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All who? Those who are saved. Okay. You and I who are saved, we're the ones who are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Those who are not. Okay. The great white throne. Okay. The judgment seat of Christ is specifically for we, the church of the living God. Okay? It is. Once we get redeemed, okay? The great white throne comes after what? Okay? All right? 
Hey, brother, just chronolo chronologically even, okay? Please. Okay, so let's continue. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone, uh, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And that affects our like our rewards and stuff like that, that we get, okay? And remember, if you are serving the Lord just for rewards and not out of the fact that you love him who first loved you, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. I really do believe that, okay? You're saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, yes, but if you're doing what you are doing as the Lord has called you to just for the sake of, oh boy, I want to get all kinds of rewards, if I get rewards for doing anything, thank you, Lord. That's a little bit like extra icing on the cake. It's not my motivation. And it ought not to be your motivation. Okay? Brad, you mean we shouldn't do this just for rewards? When you're doing it, serving the Lord just for what's going to accrue to you as rewards... Who's the real motivation there? What is the real motivation there? You think about that. Okay? You think about that. Ow. <laughs> you think about that. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. You know, Christianity, a lot of Christians want you to believe that when you see the Lord, it's going to be, you're going to go up to him and give him a bro hug. You are an idiot. And I'm being polite to you. Well, an idiot is someone void of logic and reason. You're an idiot. You think you're going to go up to heaven and give a bro You think Paul went, hey, Jesus, hey, buddy, yeah. When James fell down on his feet, is dead. We're going to have to give an account to the Lord, brethren, sisters. And I hope you're not behind me. And yeah, I hope I'm not behind you, right? Right? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. Not going to hide anything. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Okay? And and go now to Philippians chapter 3. See, the easy believism devil comes along. Save yourself by your belief. Repentance is a work, and calling on the name of the Lord is a work, and prayer is a work, and blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Okay? Go to hell already. Okay? But they come in with the, okay, you saved yourself because you just believed. It's like, okay, okay, you easy believism, guys. So when it comes to walking a life of sanctification, abstaining from all appearance from evil, they're like, lightly, it's like, yeah, you should walk. But you know what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Now, here's the thing. A sin is not going to keep you from the Lord. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are once saved, always saved, sealed unto the day of redemption. And if that weren't the case, then you could call God a liar. Okay? You're once saved, always saved. As saved, okay, sin is not going to separate you from the love of God. Okay? You will have a separation of fellowship, Blessings, mercies, kindness, rewards, but your salvation, your salvation is not affected. Okay? That is true. But see, the way we serve the Lord reflects Him. And when you've got someone, well, I just believe. Dude, you're really throwing down them beers pretty quick. They're like, ah! It's okay, man. I'm saved. I'm I'm sealed until the day of redemption. I'm just repenting the morning. It's all good, man. Or you go off on a profanity tirade. Okay? It's like, hey, it's all good. And saved people can do that. But see, they make light 
of sin in the light of eternal security. Hence, they're using uh, eternal security as if it were a crutch. Also, hence, cheapening the grace of God. And that's what's so odious. That's what's so odious. That's what's so vomitous. That's what's so vomitous. See, they have no comprehension. They can't even begin to even want to understand the grace of God, but they understand the grace of God as if it were a get-out-of-jail-free card. So what? We shouldn't even strive. Hmm? Then you got some of these Christians like, hey, don't even worry about it, man. Like the hyper people, you know, not like, Ugh, but the hyper grace people or the hyper Calvinists, like, I don't even need to pray. I just need to say, hey, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm one of your special elect people. Oh, yeah, they're not, but I am. The pride there, huh? Okay. But Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 14. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Okay? Not talking about salvation. Okay? We're not, when he saves you, you come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name. He saves you. You're sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. That's it. So what is he talking about? Okay, what is he talking about? He talks about this in uh, uh, 2 Timothy, where um, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses 11 on to verse 13, okay? It is a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And again, it's not talking about salvation. It's talking about rewards, blessings, mercies, kindness, gifts, provisions, that kind of thing. Salvation? What? No. Or else he's a liar. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Okay? He already addresses that. So, where he says that I may win Christ. Okay? Win Christ. But he's already saved. What does that mean? Okay? I don't want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to hear that. Don't you? Okay? Don't you? If rewards come, to praise you, Lord. But I want to hear, well done faithful servant. And you know what? That would be enough for me. That's enough for me. The Lord look at me after he grills me about, you know, things I did in my flesh and oh boy, you brought that up. Of course I brought that up, you know. But after all that, it holds my head, you know, it's like, well done. You messed up a lot. Come on. I want that. I want you to want that. But see, when you make it about the reward itself, if your motivation is just to receive a reward, and what better a reward than the one you love? Well done. That ought to be the... Uh, that ought to be more wor uh, weight to you than anything the devil can offer you, man. What's wrong with you? And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Okay, what are we reading to under verse 14? That I may know him, Relation, okay? And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Yes, dying to self, dying to this world. If you don't take up your cross daily, that kind of thing, okay? And sometimes for us of the Church of the Living God, just waking up sometimes. 
is enough, isn't it? But conformable unto his death, we are told to mortify in Colossians, you know, uh, Colossians 3, uh, 5, 3, 5 in Colossians, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Talking about our flesh, things of the flesh. Okay? Don't, don't fall for this heresy that, okay, yeah, we can't stop sinning, but that we shouldn't even strive. That we shouldn't even strive. But then when you strive, you sin, you realize, <laughs> right? Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? Let's continue this. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. In heart, yes. Sinlessly perfect. <laughs> Give me a break. You're not God. You're not God. Okay? But I follow after that I may apprehend for that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, and here it is, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And like I've told you, our enemies want to keep you here. They'll dredge up, they're, they're experts at it. They dredge up things of the past. They're expert at it. They want to keep you here. They want to keep you chained. And you should not forget where you came from. We already looked at that. But you don't dwell there. You don't, you gotta keep going. You gotta press forward. Okay? All right, you're going to sin every day, yes. But see, you can't let that keep you there or else you're never going to grow. And remember, I've learned more through failure, through chastisement, than when things are going good. When things are going good, you, one can sometimes get what? Complacent. Complacent, right? I don't want to get complacent. And praise the Lord, I'm, he, he keeps me. Uh, because when I get moments where I'm complacent, you know, wishy-washy, lukewarm, or, ah, I do that for, ah, uh, I don't want to do that. Oh, uh, I don't want to spend that much time on this. You know, Lord, conveniently, you know. For example, the diet thing for me has been working great. I hope if you're doing it, I hope it's going good for you. But all of a sudden, something like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, or some friction arises, or I, our, our beloved, beloved brother uh, has to remind me, hey, Brad, hey, Brad, <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> Praise the Lord, you know, stuff like that, you know. <laughs> but see, we, we can't stay here. We have to keep moving forward, okay? And even when we know that to be sinlessly perfect is impossible, but yet we have today. I've already sinned today. I don't know about you perfect people out there, okay? But I've already sinned today. I have. And if you're honest, so have you, okay? That doesn't mean that we are oblivious to it. No. But we don't let it chain us here. Okay? We don't. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 33 and 34. Now, in Romans chapter 7, Paul talks about the struggle of us at the church of the living God. Paul didn't want to sin, but he sinned. 
He wanted to be sinlessly perfect, but he realized, well, guess what, cousin, it ain't going to happen. But as a result of that, he puts all his faith on the Lord, but yet still seeks to be that sinless. But he doesn't, see, it didn't let him drive him crazy because he realizes that this gets in the way. Okay? This gets in the way. Unlike with Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, who kept the law perfectly, you and I, we can't do that. Okay? This ain't, again, this ain't rocket science here, people. But Paul, who in Romans chapter 7, exhorts us, it's like, look, look, you're, you're going to mess up. You're going to fall. You're going to fall. You're going you're gonna to screw up. Some of you are going to screw up bad. Some of you are going to screw up really bad. And in Romans chapter 7, Oh, wretched man that I am! Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I can't do it by myself. I can't keep the law. I, I, I live in a cave. The, the thoughts come to my head. I, I can't look around. Oh! I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. As long as our spirit and soul are housed in this sagging skin suit, there is no such thing as sinless perfectionism. No such thing. Okay? No such thing. And realize that, but yet at the same time, don't cease from striving to please the Lord by walking according to what he has given us for today. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and verse 34. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. His grace covers it all. Don't worry. He, yeah, you should, but don't worry. You're going to heaven because you just believe. It's like, hey, I'm elect, man. I just, hey, thanks for saving me because I'm so good. So I'm going to go on my merry way because I don't even have I'm elect. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And how we serve the Lord reflects him. Paul right there in verse 34 said, Awake to righteousness and sin not. But yet then again, you wicked Sinless perfection devils. Apparently, again, Paul didn't get the memo about, well, he didn't have enough faith, and then he must not have truly really been a saved man because he still sinned. Apparently, Paul didn't get that memo. Get out of here. Romans chapter 6, which is before Romans chapter 7. Okay. Now, now uh, Lord had me to do... Um, uh, expository video on Romans chapter 6 a couple years ago, okay? That'll be in the description box, along with Romans chapter 7, okay? But Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 4. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Newly saved person, okay? Newly saved person. Yes, yes. Newly saved? It's like, okay, you, the Lord is in you now, He's going to change things in you. He's made you a new creature. You're a new creature because he lives in you. Okay? So now things are going to happen. You can't go back to the vomit. Okay? Unfortunately, some are and some do. But see, being a new creature, the Lord in you, it's like, don't do that. Don't do that. Look, look in the book. See what I want you to do for today and live by this. Okay? And I'll lead you and guide you. Okay? He's not going to do it by force. Okay, or else you'd be a robot. Now, there's the devil going to force you to do things against the Lord, okay? You have to make the right choice, okay? But, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Hmm. Live any longer. You know, there are saved people because, again, they're falling away, okay? Saved people can get messed up in sin. A saved person doesn't fall away. A saved person does not fall away. 
a saved person falls. A lost convert, an infiltrator, a fake, falls away. Okay? Saved people don't fall away. Sooner or later, whether the Lord's got to kill you, sooner or later, things are going to come around. Whether it's by him killing you, you were really messed up. And I had to take you out because you were really messed up. Imagine, imagine having to be at the judgment seat of Christ for that. And you know what? There are going to be, be people that are. This wickedness will not be purged from you except you die. Okay? And imagine how wicked you would have to be as a brother or sister for the Lord. It's like, okay, you've been, you've been warned, you've been admonished, you've been this and that. I'm in you and you, you're out of here. You're out of here. Okay? You're out of here. And we're going to see people at the judgment seat of Christ that have had that happen. Okay? I have even heard, I don't agree with it because I'm not really up on it, uh, Lester Roloff, who done got killed in a plane crash. There are some that surmise, well, maybe there was some uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 thing going on with him. Lester Roloff. Save brother. Lester Roloff. The beloved Lester Roloff. Okay? All right? But I've heard that. I've heard that. Okay? But we're going to encounter that. All right? All right? But here, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death, that death, that death of your self-righteousness and death to the things of the world. If that is not there and you're having life in the fact that you, God's grace covers everything so I can live like the devil, and, and you're, you're missing something, okay? You're missing something, all right? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So on to the new, newly saved convert. Okay? On to the newly saved convert. All right? See, Romans chapter 4, by Romans chapter 4, if the Lord is using you to guide someone onto himself through the Romans road, by Romans chapter 4, you know what you're dealing with. Whether that person is going to accede to the truth or stonewall you. Hence, Romans 5 and 6, okay? All right? But now Romans 6, verses 15 on to verse 19. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Here, the easy believers are heretic. First four verses in Romans chapter 6 for the new saved convert is like, okay, things are going to change. Uh, verse 15, hey! You're saved. So don't worry about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, verses 1 and 4. Okay, you're, you're, you're a babe in Christ, okay? You, the Lord's going to show you, but he's using me to tell you, uh, you see what he saved you out of? You don't, don't go back to that, okay? You're a new creature. He's in you, hence your new creature. Here's the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? Read the book of Romans first. Okay, read the book of Romans, learn a for our stuff, then go to the gospel accounts, okay? All right, yes, yes, all right. But here, verse 15, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law? We're under the law of Christ, but not the law of the Ten Commandments, okay? We're not, because we couldn't keep them. Uh, it was fulfilled, okay? All right? And you're, you're questioning that? Uh, Romans chapter 13. Read that, okay? But, hey, don't worry about it. You're saved. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. You're going to heaven. Live your life. Don't be too extreme. A little doesn't hurt. Right? A little doesn't hurt. Go ahead. Mingle in a little of the, this paganism and heresy and whatnot. A little, hey, hey, just a little ain't going to hurt you. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, you have a choice, okay? His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. 
But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men. Why? Because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. So what? We shouldn't strive at all. But if it's vanity, why strive at all? Why? Because we are ambassadors for Christ and the Lord lives within us. Okay? And we have been saved by his grace to our faith. And, you know, in Ephesians chapter 2, dear friend, in Ephesians chapter 2, where he talks about you know, which a lot of people like to go to, but they don't include verse 10 in Ephesians chapter 2, verses, uh, I can get there, 8 under 10, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, and he's referencing the works of the law, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus on two good works, not to stay saved or be saved, but to be ambassadors for him. You are an ambassador for Christ, and how you serve him reflects him. That's why. That's why we strive. That's why. Okay? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That's why. That's why even though we're going to mess up, even though we're going to sin and make fools of ourselves, even though we're going to, uh, in a fit of a temper tantrum, behave like a devil or say things that we regret. That's why we continue, why we press on. We repent, Lord. 1 John chapter 1, 1 John 1. Uh, what was I here for? <laughs> yeah. First John chapter one. <clears throat> uh, one second, please. First John chapter two, verses one and two. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man, and these guys, they, they, they focus in on the if. If any Man's sin. See? If. Hmm. Again, apparently Paul missed that. Even your Pope Peter missed that. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. If any man. See, it says if. If any man sin. You're going to sin. Get over yourself. You're not God. But the point is, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not of ours, ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yes, for the whole world. But the whole world isn't going to go to him on his terms, are they? Are they? Okay. Ecclesiastes 9. Ecclesiastes 9. Verses 13 on to verse 18. Can I have a little, just a just brief expository here. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Verse 14. There was a little city, a little city, and few men within it. Little city. We are the body of Christ. There are thousands of us. But I say there's probably billions of Christians, aren't there? Probably, okay? There was a little city and few men within it, and there came a great king, a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. A great king, hmm, a 
great king. I already made a reference onto this. Job 41, verses 33 and 34. Upon earth there is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Ooh. And of course, in Job, uh, the Leviathan, the piercing serpent, the Leviathan, which is clearly a veiled reference onto who? Lucifer, son of the morning. Isaiah chapter 14. Okay. King over all the children of pride. A little city and a great king came against it. Hmm? Isaiah 14, verses 12 on verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Ye shall be as gods, and only good and evil. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. You're a king of your own castle, aren't you? Or in your own mind, right? I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Make way for me. I'm somebody good. I'm special. Yeah. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds because their head is stuck in the clouds. They're so full of themselves, you know, in the high horse. I will be like the most high. I don't sin anymore. I'm like God. I don't sin anymore. I saved myself because I just believe. I don't, I don't even pray. If I, I just say, hey, thanks, Lord. You took care of me. You saved me because I'm so good. Because I am like the Most High. Great King. And built great bulwarks against it. Ooh, like what? Hmm. Strongholds. Oh, we're going to look at that. Don't worry. Strongholds. Imaginations. Hmm. Oh, and verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Uh, Philippians 1, Philippians 1, okay, verses 27 on to 30. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you, or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified, by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Mm. What does that mean? Their rock is not like our rock. I, I'm saved because I'm a good person. God saw something good in me. I just saved myself because I say I believe. Therefore, I think, therefore I am. Right? Right. Yeah. See the folding of the arms, which represents stronghold, stone wall, right? Yeah. I'm elect. I'm elect. I put away this, that, and the other thing. Hmm. Yeah. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here to be in me. And of course, you can read First Peter, and we are going to do that. First Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 on to verse 10. Okay. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And amen. And amen. Okay? So a great king comes against a little city hmm? and builds all these fortresses and strongholds trying to divert us and to suppress us. 
Verse 15. Now there was found in, a, in it a poor wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. And what does it say about the poor? Okay. In Luke chapter 6, before the death, burial, and resurrection, yes, but, you know, these charismatic uh, name it and claim it twits are really good at uh, twisting this stuff. Uh, Luke 6, 20 on to verse 26. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, referring unto the spiritual here in this part. Okay? Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers on to the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation in your best life now. Yeah. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall weep. Laugh at sin. Laugh at sin. Make light of it. All things are lawful for you, remember. Yeah. Not all things edify. Okay? Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Okay? And and also thing, this thing about, you know, dis, dismantling these wicked um, prosperity twits. James 5, 1 and 6. Which is, in context, talking about those who who stocked up stuff for the time of Jacob's trouble. They thought that gold and silver will save them when the economy collapses because of that man of sin, the son of perdition. We find out that gold and silver during the time of Jacob's trouble is not going to be any value to you. Go to now ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Again, how does gold and silver rust? It doesn't. What does that mean? It ain't being used. Today, say the American economy collapses right now, you're going to break off a Troy piece of your gold or silver and go to Walmart and say, here, what's the exchange rate going to be? And knowing that eventually the mark of the beast is coming, so, it, no, gold and silver, you hear everybody, they got to exchange that into whatever currency, right? Because you cannot go to Wally World with a chunk of gold. It's like, here, it doesn't work that way. Okay? Watch out for that. Watch out for that. Let's continue. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is kept back, uh, back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on earth and been wanton. Ye have nursed your hearts as in the day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Ah. And do not the rich men condemn you and bring you to the judgment seats? Hmm? Yeah. Blessed are ye poor, right? But, okay, all right, your thing is like, okay, Brad, what about for us today in this dispensation? Okay? Easy. That's easy. 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 4, 10 on verse 14. We are fools for Christ's sake. Ye are wise in Christ. It's sarcasm here. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Talking about those in the church of the living God who were accepting sin, living in sin, stuff like that. You read in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 here, okay, <laughs> about how they were saying, we aren't judging you, okay? We love you. That's when you ought to come to the church. 
Okay, let's continue. Even on to this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands. Being reviled, we blessed. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. And of course, quickly, Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You know that great king that builds great bulwarks around us? Wants to tempt us with, come on, just a little sin ain't going to hurt you. Dad, don't worry about it. Right? Yeah. Oh, and also 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 3 on to verse 10. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience and affliction, in necessities and distresses, in stripes and imprisonments, in tumults and labors, in watchings and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and fame, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by, by evil report and good report, as deceivers, and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful. Yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. And see, the heretics want to equate that to tangible physical money and stuff like that. Making many rich, how so? The riches of Christ, the fear of the Lord, remember, which is precious beyond anything, okay? The love of Jesus Christ that is at Calvary, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood that he shed on the cross, it's without it's it's priceless. Our Lord is priceless. The salvation that he offers unto you when you come to him on his terms is priceless. <laughs> priceless. Okay? And um, Second uh, Corinthians seven verses one and verse five. Okay, <laughs> having therefore, right, having therefore, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Paul never talked about the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you. For I have said before that ye are on in our hearts to die and to live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding, exceeding joyful in all our tribulations. For when we were come to, into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. And when we see the devil surrounding us, hmm? Hmm? but see, here comes that one, that poor wise man, and by his wisdom, he delivers the city. Hmm? What is that talking about? Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 on to verse 11. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver us, and doth deliver, excuse me, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, spiritual body, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Okay? Verse 15 again in Ecclesiastes 9. 
Now there was found in it a poor wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered the same, that same poor man. Ooh. And also uh, Romans chapter 12. Verses 9 on to verse 16. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. I prefer my own among the lost, obviously. And if you don't, then you got a problem. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Okay? Distributing to the necessity of saints, given the hospitality. Bless them with per which persecute you. Bless and curse not. You bless them by telling, you the, telling them the truth. By demonstrating as an ambassador for Christ unto the lost to persecute you. Okay? You don't fight fire with fire. Because fire wins. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. But condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Hmm. And remember here, <laughs> where he says, recompense no man to no man evil to, for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, say the Lord. Saith the Lord, excuse me. Okay? Okay? But what happens? Sometimes we as the church of the living God, we get out of a pickle and then we go right into another sometimes, don't we? Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man. Now this was written during the dispensation of the law, where it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. So with that in mind, go to Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 19. Judges chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 19. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges. Hmm. An individual, a poor, poor wise man. Hmm. Which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken on to their judges. But they went a-whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord. But they did not so. And when the Lord raised up the judges, when, and when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was the, with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of, their, of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. So they got out of trouble and when the one who was there keeping order was gone, they went back to it like a dog returning to his vomit. Okay? But see, who is the ultimate judge of all the earth? We as the church of the living God judge because we have a perfect standard and we judge ourselves first by the perfect standard of the authorized version. Okay, But we can judge others because we first judge ourselves and the judge of all the earth lives within us. Okay, But see, someone who, fall, who has fallen away doesn't have that true judge within them, do they? No, they don't. And this is a warning. Okay? See, we have the Lord permanently within us. In this dispensation, they didn't. Be careful about quenching the Spirit, brother, sister. We're not going to lose our salvation because it's not ours to lose. But when the Lord delivers you, are you yet no man remembered that same poor man? And Matthew chapter 11... Matthew chapter 11, hmm? Matthew chapter 11, 28 on the 30, hmm? Hmm? 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, just one verse. Just one verse. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich. And see, the heretics want to talk about it like in this. No, 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 no. There are those who have great riches, but yet have nothing. There are those who have nothing, but yet have great riches. And our Lord Jesus Christ is priceless. Yet for your sakes he became poor that ye through his poverty might be made rich. Might be rich, excuse me. Goes uh, to wonder too, how many people are out there disregarding that same poor man? Hmm? I wonder. Verse 16. Then I said, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Yeah. We, as ambassadors for Christ, living according to the gospel for us today, having the ministry of reconciliation and word of reconciliation, okay? Preaching the fear of the Lord. Repentance towards God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection, yes. But they don't want to hear. They don't want to hear that same poor man. Hmm. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherein I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. There, uh, verse 14 in Ecclesiastes 9, there was a little city and few men within it, and there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Yet, that same poor man, our lowly Jesus, who came as the lamb, but see, when he come back, <laughs> he's going to be a lion. Okay? Okay? And also, too, what does he say? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Hmm? Then said I, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. But his words will never pass away. But how many are not hearing? The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Verse 18. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is better than weapons of war, because our weapons are not carnal. But one sinner destroyeth much good. One sinner destroyeth much good. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 7 on the 9. 
ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not from of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. One sinner destroyeth much good, but yet a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Hmm? Great king, king all over all the children of pride, building up them bulwarks around us. A little doesn't hurt. Go ahead. That just a little ain't going to bother you. Why not? Huh? Repent about it later. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you should try to abstain from all prayer. But don't worry about it. Live your life. Don't be, don't, you know, be careful for nothing, right? A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 6 on 8. <laughs> Remember, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, what were they doing? Guy was having relations with his stepmother. If it was his mother, his actual mother, I believe, uh, the Lord would have told us. So he was sleeping with his stepmother. And instead of the brethren saying, hey, get out of here. You, you, you get with the Lord and you and him get that taken care of. You get out of here. We don't want your filth infecting us. But what were they doing? We're not judging you. You read the context. Read this whole chapter yourself. What were they doing? We're not judging you. Come in. This is when you need us. And not only were they not kicking them out, but they were boasting. Look at how much we love. He needs us now. He's having sex with his stepmother. But, and we ought to kick him out. But no, see how, see how, how moral we are? How good of Christians we are by accepting. Your glorying is not good. Verses 6 on to verse 8. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye have unleavened, as ye are unleavened. For Christ, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hmm? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You're going to sin. Yes, you are. Okay, you are going to sin. Okay, but when you start being like this, like the example given us here in 1 Corinthians 5, and are okay with it and justifying it, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. James chapter 3. James chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 6. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Very interesting with this. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. And only Lord was a perfect man. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. That with goeth into the body, defileth not the man, but that which cometh out. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Beware, evil communications corrupt good manners. Ecclesiastes 
Ecclesiastes 10, 1 on to verse 4. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. A little don't hurt. Won't cost you your salvation. But what does our Lord mean to you truly? What does our Lord mean to you truly? A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. That's not a dig on you left-handed people, okay? Figure of speech. Yea, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way, fool says in his heart, there is no God, walketh by the way, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father by, but by him. So when someone who says in his heart there is no God, except they are their own gods, okay, his wisdom faileth him. And the fool's wisdom is what? The wisdom of this world, which is earthly, sensual, and devilish, right? Okay? And he saith to everyone that, is he, that he is a fool. Uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. This was not part of the notes. 1 John chapter 2. 18 on to 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us. But they were not of us. That's the thing. They were never of us. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked falleth into mischief. Save people, brother. Don't fall away. Save people fall. Oh, we mess up. But we don't fall away. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction of unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And that unction is the seal unto the day of redemption. Yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way, who says in his heart there is no God, says in his heart, he wouldn't say it with his mouth. His wisdom faileth him, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. Because he's a fool. And he saith to everyone that he is a fool. And they were manifest that they were not all of us. <laughs> Verse 4. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place. For yielding pacifieth great offenses. Twofold. Submit yourself unto God. Okay? Twofold. Uh, where is that? Uh, James 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. You do that first. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. And also, as we have already read, uh, where, were we, we, where, where did we read that? In Romans chapter two, uh, 12. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Number one, twofold. Submit yourself unto God first. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You cannot resist the devil without the Lord. Second fold. Romans 12. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Verse 19. But rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. 20 and 21. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Feed him with the sincere milk of the word. Okay. Uh, give him with the bread, you know, the scripture, the word. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Commit yourselves unto a faithful creator. Okay? Uh, wait, 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 one second. Come on, pause. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 
On to verse 24. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Okay? See, and here's where people err. Jesus never sinned. But what he's talking about is how you handle persecution for being of the church of the living God. Okay? That's why he's talking about the example. Because you'll hear so much of this nonsense about imitate Christ. You can't. Christ never sinned. Okay? And besides, imitate does not appear in Scripture. Okay? And he reminds us, okay, who did no sin. That's where you and I fail, even though you think you don't. Okay? Neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he reviled, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. So twofold. Okay? The ruler of this world rise up against you. Submit yourself unto God and resist the devil. The Lord, you got a problem with the Lord? Something's going on? Hmm? Hmm? Examine yourselves. Prove your own selves, whether you be in the faith. Okay? It's not up to you to get even, too. Okay? But examine yourselves. Prove your own selves, whether or not you be in the faith. And you do that daily. So that's going to be it for this video. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, it's not. No, it's not. I want to leave you with this. You should beat yourself up over your, over your sinning, but you don't stay there. You continue on. 2 Timothy 4, 5, and 8. On to 8. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof thy, of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith, brethren. Brother, sister, you're going to sin. And I know a lot of you, you hate yourself. Um, and yes, we can be bothered by our sins. As we're supposed to be, of course. But don't stay there. You messed up. His mercies are new every morning. Joy, weeping endureth for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. His mercies are new every morning. Take courage. And be strong in the Lord. Because your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching this if you do. Uh, hopefully it'll, you get some edification. Or most of all that the Lord be glorified through this. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Thank you to those of you who pray for us, who help us. Thank you to all the brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We love you all. We pray for so many of you and pray for one another. Fight the good fight, brethren. Fight the good fight. I love you. See you in the next video.